sharing my bullet journal setup for the month of March. Hi there, welcome to today's video. I am Natasha of Natasha Miller Creates and today I am setting up my journal for the month of March. I am using my B5 sized Archer and Olive dark red notebook. It is my favorite size to use. Um, this is my third year using one and I really enjoy the size. And I will be using acrylographs, paintbrushes, stickers, and I believe that's it to set up <laughs> my monthly setup. Um, this is what I normally use. I have really gotten into the habit of using the acrylographs quite a bit. They're from Archer and Olive as well, if you're not familiar with them. Um, a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with them. I absolutely love them. Um, while they are great to color with like a normal marker, I do find painting with them like this is really fun as well. I'm able to go in and add shadows and just play with textures and have a lot of fun with the acrylographs. So I highly recommend experimenting with your supplies. If you do have acrylographs, definitely try this. I am using palette paper to activate my pen and then I'm adding a little bit of water for my vase, or I guess this is a jug, my jug vase. <laughs> I use a little bit too much water and you kind of want to watch for that. The 160 GSM paper is really great for painting on, but they can only hold so much water. And I know last month or the month before I tested the bounds of how much they could hold. <laughs> And this month I came close. <laughs> so on my palette paper, I mixed some of the black acrylograph with the light gray that I'd been using and just created a bit of a darker shade. And then went in with the gray just to lighten up that um, shadow a little bit as I found it was a little bit dark. I find the month of March, it gets a little bit tougher to maintain a journaling habit and an art habit. And I know I'm struggling with that myself. And that's part of the reason why I'm publishing this video in March as opposed to before March ends. <laughs> um, I know, yes, this time of year can be really challenging. Um, September is the start of the school year, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. So it can be really exciting to get started, but then to keep that motivation going and that habit going past February can definitely be a challenge. <laughs> and uh, we're not immune to that. I speak to my friends, they're struggling too. But it's important to do that and remember, remember why you're journaling. And for me, to be able to sit and create like this was so great. A lot of what I do is in the digital sphere. And so being able to just paint on paper was so wonderful. I really do miss it, um, the feel of paper. <laughs> and so this was a great opportunity to try something new, um, play with my stuff, play with my supplies. I have gotten really bad about that. And your supplies will dry out whether you use them or not. I have Tombos and Calliographs that have run dry because I haven't used them. And I would rather have something run dry because I've used it too much than have it run dry because it just got old and hasn't been used. So that is my question for you today. What is that one stationary supply that you are afraid to use because it was expensive or you covered it? Let me know down in the comments below. Mine are actually my Karen brush pen markers. I haven't touched those since I swatched them and then I have some a, a set of the pigment markers as well and again I have not touched them since I swatched them so I'm going to make it a priority that this month I use them for at least one project. So again let me know down below what your project what your coveted stationary item is and what you hope to use it for. So for my lilies I went with a light blue um, color so that they popped off the page a little bit but once the blue was dry I went in with a white acrylograph and I kind of just lightened that blue up a little bit and this in turn ended up creating natural shadows which I actually really liked how it ended how it ended up so I was super happy with my lilies for my cover page 
As always, I do have a sticker set that goes hand in hand with it. And I have those available for my From Blank to Brilliant email subscribers. So if you, like me, are running behind and have yet to set up your March and are looking for a theme idea, you can head on over to the blog, which is linked down below, and grab those. They are free for a limited time. Another advantage to using the acrylographs like traditional paint is that if you have a thin layer of paint, it's going to dry that much faster. And I really appreciated this, especially because I was running behind, but also it ended up drying so quickly. So I was able to go in and add the extra details that I wanted to, as well as do the outlines. Overall, this page took me about an hour to do. It took me longer than I had intended, but that's just because I kind of got into a groove. I've been really enjoying re-watching Bridgerton. I'm so excited for the next season to come. It's not even funny. <laughs> and so I've been re-watching the older seasons. I believe actually I was watching Queen Charlotte. And so it was kind of fun to watch it again and see what I missed the first time around. For my hand-lettered cover page, I did the quote, wait while I overthink this, um, which has been my theme for February um, and my mantra. Even at work, I started overthinking something to the point where I had my coworker overthinking something, <laughs> and it was just a mini disaster. So, yes, this is very applicable to where I'm at right now. And now I'm adding in the month, which is March, obviously, and I'm using acrylographs and just doing some faux calligraphy. Overall, I'm really happy with how this page turned out and I actually really love this color scheme. I don't know what it is about these colors, but that yellow with that green, <laughs> it just scratches a niche in my brain that I didn't know I have. Now, I know you might look at this and think I hate those two colors together and that's fine, but for whatever reason, it really, it just makes me feel calm. <laughs> happy and calm so I yeah I really enjoyed using these colors and now I'm going in and adding outlines to my um, painting lately I've been adding a darker shade of what I painted for my outlines and this month I decided to go back to doing black outlines um, my favorite part about creative journaling is the ability to explore and experiment with my style. Um, I'm still kind of in flux at the moment in terms of my style. I've had a very similar style for my journaling now for probably about a year and a half, but I'm kind of wanting to change that up again. Um, I don't want to make any commitments, but I want to have more fun and I know inside my art self is maximalist and I've really toned that down in my bullet journal and so I'm toying with the idea of going back to my maximalist roots so um we'll see what April brings <laughs> or my April setup brings I should say because we're only in March please February just flew by I am not ready for April <laughs> I, I mean, I am. I'm excited. There's something I'm going to in April that I'm, I can't wait for, but I still have a lot to do before then. So let it be, just let's enjoy March. <laughs> for this setup, I again cut out tabs, which you will see as I go, and then coloring in the tabs with acrylographs. My tabs are for the month, the calendar, my monthly overview, and then every week as it goes by. I will say this now, normally I do all the weekly setups in one sitting, but because I was a little bit rushed for time, I decided to do those another day. So we'll see how that goes. Normally when I do that, <laughs> it means I'm behind all the time, <laughs> but I'm going to hold myself accountable this month. I've really, I don't want to say slacked off, um, that's not the word I want to use. Um, just really retreated into myself um, for February. Had a lot going on. Um, there was a lot. I was. We had a family vacation, which was so fantastic and so fun. But 
my anxiety planning for that and getting everybody ready and I just it kind of took up all of my capacity um, and so that was my biggest focus for February was just to kind of get through that and then when we got home it was just getting back into back into the swing of things um, I really did take a vacation. I read three books, <laughs> which I haven't done in a really long time. So that was great and didn't really think much about, you know, content creation and stuff like that. So it was a good break, but now I really need to get buckled down and get back into it. So here I am setting my calendar page. I'm using the same calendar page setup that I've been using since January. And that is a setup that I got from Jess over at Joshi Curran on YouTube as well. And that is to have a notes section along the calendar for important dates and marks or notes, sorry, about that week. And I know you're used to seeing my cat in and out of the frame. That was actually my son, <laughs> my oldest son, who was checking to see what I was doing. <laughs> he, uh, he's getting more curious about what I do, which is super cute. Um, he told his class that I have a YouTube channel. And so that was super cute. And I, I was very grateful that I don't swear on my channel, <laughs> or at least not like, um, strong swears I guess since the whole class did watch one of my tutorials so yay for that <laughs> but here I am doing my faux calligraphy again and I will be going in with the black outline as well and some washi I kept this page very minimal um, didn't want didn't have too many things I wanted to add and this is my Archer and Olive stamp set. I believe it's from one of the sub boxes. I can't remember which one. But I thought it would be fun to have the plain, simple, sans serif stamps for my days of the week. And here you see me fixing up a mistake. I drew the line, drew an extra line. And I'm just using my white acrylic graph to go in and get rid of it. And it works pretty well. I had to, I went over it twice because the ink wasn't dry enough the first time I did it. So that the white ended up picking up the black. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are doing corrections like this is the black ink or the, the pen ink still has to dry as well. Or else the, whether you use a acrylic graph, whether you use a gel ink pen, doesn't matter. It's still going to pick up that color off the page. As I said, I am adding in the outlines to my lettering and I also, as always, added in my borders as well. And these are the stickers that will be available or rather they'll be available as printables so that you can print and cut them out at home. Doing the stamping this way does take a little longer so I did speed up this part of the video um, <laughs> but I also showed you how I stamped these so that you get an idea of what to expect. Stamping individual letters does take a little bit longer so definitely keep that in mind if these stamps are something you want to use. I find it almost meditative so I really do enjoy stamping like this. I'm adding in my calendar months and I'm or days of the week, sorry, and I'm so proud of myself that I did not make a mistake on those because I always make mistakes <laughs> on the calendar page. So for this layout, I'm doing my monthly overview. I first did this overview in my January setup, completely forgot to include it in my February setup, and realized this only once February was over and I wanted to sit down and do my February month in review <laughs> when I realized I didn't even do an overview. So I made a, a post-it note to myself on my desk to add the monthly overview. Um, unlike February, I didn't include a trigger tracker. I wasn't using it as much as I had intended to, which is good, I guess, but um, but that's not to say I didn't have down moments where it would have been nice to know what the trigger was. So this, I think, those trigger trackers, I'm going to move them into my wellness journal. And just to be clear, when I say a health and wellness journal, I don't mean like... <laughs> 
MLM style health and wellness. No, no, no. <laughs> um, just things that I find on the internet. For example, my latest health and wellness layout was um, different teas and the effect of teas. I've done an Enneagram layout. I've done a mood layout. Just stuff like that. Um, just kind of things that are going on. I'm going to, I'm very excited. I'm going to do a mindfulness layout as well. Um, but now I'm getting ahead of myself. But that's what I mean when I say health and wellness, um, not, you know, consumeristic health and wellness. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know what the correct word is. I just want to be very clear. I'm not going to sell you MLM stuff. <laughs> that, that is not my jam. <laughs> so again, I'm doing my faux calligraphy for my heading, and then I will be stamping the titles um, for the sections underneath. Those titles will include important dates for the month, um, my art licensing to-dos, the goals I want to work on for the month, as well as just a general to-dos list. And that's all on the left-hand side of the page. And then on the right-hand side of the page, I am hoping to get in some work on my word of the year, which is courage. And I'm using Ali Edwards' One Little Word program. Um, I paid for it for 2023 and I didn't use it. So one of my goals for 2024 is to actually do the courses that I've paid for. <laughs> and that is one of them. So, uh, yeah, it's um, it's going, I guess. I haven't really done much. As I said, February absolutely flew by. Um, I have managed to go through all my emails and I have found majority of the courses I've registered for and signed up for. If you watch my new bullet journal setup video, which I've linked up in the cards, um, I, you'll see the layout that I did for it, which is to capture all the courses, the teachers, the platforms, and then how I feel about them. So I have filled that layout out. And so <laughs> now I just hopefully will start ticking off finishing the courses soon. Um, I'm excited to share what I found in those courses. Um, yeah, it's, you know, hindsight's 2020. And looking back, there are definitely courses I didn't have to buy. But, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I will say it again. When I feel self-doubt, my instinct is to learn. And so therefore, I buy courses. Um, <laughs> and I... Oh, I don't want to say I don't need courses, but I don't need courses to that extent. Like, I know what I'm doing now. I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. I need to now just execute. And so that's just, if you're in the same boat, um, I don't want to say stop buying courses. Um, <laughs> but maybe just be a little bit more aware of why you're purchasing it. Uh, so this is my layout, my first weekly layout. And I decided to have a bit of fun with it, and that meant doing dotted borders. So thankfully, I didn't make you watch me do the whole page of dotted borders, because <laughs> it does take a while. But again, it was very meditative. I was watching Bridgerton in the background, so it was great. And on the left-hand page, I'm doing my days of the week. And on the right-hand side, I have my habit tracker, and I am doing my to-do list. So... I've been including a habit tracker as part of my layout setups now um, since January. They're hit or miss for me, but I'm using them enough that I've decided I will keep including them. The habits I'm tracking are taking my vitamins, um, whether or not I get migraines, then um, if I am sticking to my eating plan. I did a keto diet for a few months and I saw a lot of success so I kind of want to get back on that or a variation of that and then whether or not I got some exercise in. I'm, I've am i become very sedentary with my job and I tend to lose track of time and then before I know it I have to go pick up the kids and I haven't had lunch and I haven't moved from my chair in four or five hours and it's just it's not working. <laughs> I um, definitely need to get better about incorporating exercise. Here I'm including a little doodle. 
Um, initially, my goal was to draw the circles and then pop a sticker over top of it, but there was more white space in the sticker than I wanted, so I did end up drawing a stalk of a lily anyways, and I really like how it turned out. The green dots that you saw me do over there, that's where I'm going to write in my dates. I'm using my dot grid ruler to put in my boxes to check off. So for my to-do list, on the left-hand side, I have my personal to-dos, and on the right-hand side, I have my work to-dos. I really like having them separate because that way nothing's getting lost and I have kind of a natural barrier between the two, <laughs> kind of, sort of. Um, I currently have three planners on the go. Um, I have a fourth that I should probably be using too, and it is not working for me. I have five planners on the go. Thank you. I just remembered my content planner, and I can barely keep up with this one in my content planner. And so I am working on a way to incorporate everything into one space. Um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I do like my content planner separate from this planner. I will say that. So that's probably going to stay the same, but I'd like to go from four or five to two. So I'll let you know how that goes. The other thing I started recently doing was dividing up my lines in my journal with a light gray Tombow. And I really like how that works for my brain as well. So I've been incorporating that throughout my layouts. I don't show it in the video, I don't think, but I do go back to my other layouts and add in those lines, which you will see when I share my flip through, which is right here. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. Again, let me know what your most coveted stationary item is that you're too scared to use. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you in one of these videos. Have a nice day.